Hello, beautiful friends. Welcome back or welcome to Rescues and Reads and welcome to another book miss video. So for the past several weeks, I have been on a mission to find as many Christmas or wintry holiday related books that I could find because I wanted to do a series of videos during Bookmas that would be try a chapter holiday edition. So I've collected 15 books that are holiday related and I think one is more just like wintry setting, not necessarily Christmas. And so I'm going to break this into three videos where in each video I do a try a chapter of five of the books. Now I want to make this as even as possible. So if one of the books has a first chapter that's pretty short. I'll probably go into the second chapter. I think I want to read at least 10 to 15 pages of these books. So whether that's one or two chapters, I don't know. But I want to get a good sense of the book and the writing style and things of that nature so that I can come back and kind of explain to you a little bit more about what we have. So the very first book that I want to start with is actually one that I had never heard of before. It popped up on my radar when I was placing a book outlet order because it was recommended to me and I thought that it sounded so sweet and heartwarming that I wanted to go ahead and give it a try. That is Christmas by the Book by Anne Marie Ryan. And from what I understand, this follows a couple who run a bookstore. I think it's in England. Yeah, it just says British Village. And times are tough and their bookstore is kind of on the threat of closure. And one Christmas, they are given an idea to kind of deliver books to those who might need cheering up over Christmas. So this sounds like it's just going to be super sweet and heartwarming, which is definitely something you kind of look for this time of year. And I'm excited to go ahead and give it a try and get into it. So when I'm ready to go ahead and start this first chapter or two, I will come on and give you an update once that is done. Hi y'all, I have finally finished the very first chapter of Christmas by the Book by Anne Marie Ryan. It was 10 pages long, so I feel like it gave me a really good idea of the tone and pace of the book as well as the characters. So this is told from dual perspectives from Nora and her husband Simon. The first chapter just covered Nora of course and Simon will get his own chapter and I feel like it'll be alternating throughout the book. Basically Nora and Simon own this very small bookshop in a British village. The bookshop is struggling to survive. They're kind of in the red at the moment and Nora doesn't know what to do. She took over the shop after her husband had some scary heart issues that the doctor said might have been caused by stress and so Nora offered to completely run the shop on her own even though they had previously done it together and she's kind of keeping it hidden from Simon that the finances are as bad. Throughout the very first chapter, you get a glimpse of her life as a bookstore owner. You see some familiar customers walk in and her having chats with them, her finding joy as she selects just the right books for people. It definitely has that very cozy, heartwarming feel that you want this time of year. The bookshop setting itself is very cozy and in the bookshop there is a fireplace that has like a velvet couch and some leather armchairs and there's also like a bookshop dog as well. So it's just like the perfect little atmosphere. Even in just the few short 10 pages, I found myself really absorbed and engaged and wanting to continue with the story. Like my instinct was to continue into chapter two before I remember that I was just doing a try a chapter. So I feel like that's a great sign. And this is absolutely one that I would be willing to continue with going forward. I don't know if it has an audiobook. I would have to check because that would definitely be the way I would prefer to consume this if available to me. So if I do choose to continue with it this December, I'm going to have to look into that. But obviously this is the very first one that I've tried. So I don't have anything to compare it with, but this is definitely a solid start to this vlog and I'm excited to go ahead and pick up the next one on which I haven't yet chosen, but I will definitely come on and let you know what I think of the chapter of that book when I've selected it. Hey y'all, I'm back for another update. I decided to go ahead and pick up the Christmas Murder Game by Alexandra Benedict. And after reading the little bit that I did, I don't really feel like I have a great grasp on this story. So this follows our main character, Lily, and I believe it was like 10 years prior to the start of this story, Lily's mom tragically passes away. And ever since that time, Lily has not returned to Endgame House, which is their family home. There's something about the house, or it's possibly because her mom died in that house, that Lily doesn't want to return. I'm not entirely sure about that, but Lily is basically adamant about never returning to that house. But Liliana, who is her mother's sister and who actually kind of adopted Lily after her mother passed away, has herself passed away. And in a letter she wrote prior to her death, she told Lily that she needs Lily to return for the annual Christmas game that is held at Endgame House. Now, from what I'm gathering, this game happens every single year and the ultimate goal is to find out who is going to inherit Endgame House. I don't necessarily know how the game works or why it is held every year or why it is being done in this form or fashion. Like none of that information has been given to me yet within these first 11 pages. But Liliana wants Lily to return to Endgame House this Christmas because she wants Lily to know the truth behind her mother death. And she says that she's only going to reveal it in clues that are going to be scattered throughout the game. And so Lily has to return to Endgame House in order to basically solve the reason that her mother is dead. And so Lily is reluctantly returning. She is returning not only because she wants to find out what happened to her mother, but she feels like she owes it to Liliana because she hadn't seen Liliana in a few weeks and she was basically 
telling Liliana she's not going to go back to forget about it. And then Liliana dies and Lily feels like she needs to honor Liliana's last wish. So after reading those 11 pages, I don't really have a solid idea of what is happening. I'm still pretty confused. I have a lot of questions. Like I don't understand what the Christmas game is really for and why it is held every year and how people are going to be able to win the deed to this house. I don't understand why Lily's aunt will just give her the answers that she seeks, like why she has to put it in a game. I'm not really understanding any of that so far. So, so far I'm intrigued, but just because I'm confused. Like I want answers to these questions that I didn't get. I wouldn't necessarily say that the writing style has grabbed me. Like overall, I was pretty distracted while I was reading these first 11 pages. It wasn't really holding my attention, no matter how intrigued I was by it. So, so far it is definitely number two out of the two books that I read. I definitely liked the vibe and the atmosphere of the first Christmas book more than I did this one. So I'm not sure if that's just because I'm looking for something specific in terms of atmosphere for the Christmas reads. But so far, Christmas by the book is definitely ahead of this one. So for this vlog, I still have three more chapters that I need to try. I don't think I'm going to get any more done today, but I will hopefully get all three of them done tomorrow. So I will check back in tomorrow when I have more updates and I've chosen the other three books. Hey y'all, so I just finished the chapter of the next book I chose, which was In a Holidays by Christina Lauren. So the very first chapter of this, it doesn't really give you any kind of idea of what the book is about, but it was super fun. So it follows our main character, Malin Jones, and she and her family, as well as two other families, are currently in this like Christmas cabin. It's the same cabin where they go every single Christmas and they have for many, many years. And so she wakes up in a complete panic over what happened the night before. I guess she had some drinks and she ended up making out with Theo. She and Theo and Theo's brother Andrew all grew up together. Their families have been friends for many, many years and that's why they all like vacation at Christmas together in this in this cabin. And so after the drinks, she and Theo kind of had a makeout session and she's very much panicking about this. Primarily because she knows Theo is kind of a player and also she's had a very long time crush on Theo's brother, Andrew. And so she wakes up and she runs upstairs to the attic to a man that is like a family friend, but not actually blood related. And so she woke him up frantically and is like, I need help, this is urgent, this is what happened. And then that's kind of how the chapter ended. So you don't really get an idea of what's going to happen in the book or what the entire plot is about, but I had a really great time. I do know about this book that it is a Groundhog Day trope so I believe that she's going to start living the same day over and over and over again. I don't really know much more about that. I don't know what the catalyst to that is or what the end goal to reliving the day is going to be over and over but I know that when I was reading this chapter I was having a very very good time. I don't know if I want to place it one or two because I was really really liking Christmas by the book. I was liking the vibes. I was liking where I could see that story was going. I felt like it was going to be very heartwarming and touching and this one just seems like it's going to be like a wild chaotic fun holiday time so they're both very different vibes and I'm feeling both of them so I kind of want to tie both of them for first place but if I had to put one in first it would probably be Christmas by the book and then the second and then the Christmas murder game number three and I have two more to go for this vlog so as soon as I've read the first chapter of the next book I will let you know hey y'all I'm here with my next update for my try a chapter vlog I decided to go ahead and pick up once upon a December by Amy E Reichert I read the first chapter which I believe was less than nine pages I think it was about six or seven and so far, I'm pretty charmed and captivated by the story. If for no other reason, then I want to understand more about what's happening. From what I gathered from this very first chapter, it follows our main character, Jack Clausen. He either runs or works at this bakery in a magical Christmas market. And so they'll spend four weeks in one place and then they'll start over again in a different location on December 1st and do another four weeks. But I'm not fully understanding how that works. Like, I don't know if there's some kind of time travel involved where they're able to just go ahead and go backwards or forwards in time to December 1st and just keep doing that over and over and over again. They made it sound like that might be the case. And then of course, one of the catches is that nobody can remember them. And so I guess 14 years prior to the start of the story, Jack Clausen met this girl who really intrigued him and caught his attention, but she never but he never got her name. And now anytime this Christmas market is in Milwaukee, he has some kind of encounter with her, but then of course she never remembers him and he has yet to get her name. And so he is determined this time to get her name. So far, what I'm really intrigued about is the market because I wanna understand how it works. Like it says on the back, the jewel marked with its snowy lights and charming shops stays the same while the world outside the joyful street changes, magically leaping from one December to the next every four weeks. So that makes it sound like it's December for this group all year long, but I'm not entirely sure how that works or how they manage it. So I'm really intrigued by this magical Christmas market and I want to know more about it. And then of course, I want to see the developing relationship between Jack and this mystery girl who we also don't know the name of just quite yet. So I think my intrigue 
might be weighing out everything else and I think this would be now my number one. I think I would put this number one Christmas by the book two and holidays three and then the Christmas murder game as four. The holidays is still really up there for me just because I like the fun vibes of it. Like that's what I'm in the mood for right at this moment. I feel like Christmas by the book might be a little bit more serious. It will definitely be heartwarming and touching but I'm kind of more in the mood for lighthearted which is definitely what I'm getting from in a holidays and possibly even this. So if we're going based on that then in a holidays would be two but definitely really really intrigued by this one so far. That means that the very final book I will be trying a chapter for in this vlog is going to be A Merry Little Meet Cute by Julie Murphy and Sierra Simone. I believe this follows a plus-sized adult film star so I'm interested to see what the first chapter is like. I'm going to try to get to this as soon as possible. Hopefully it will happen today and then I can go ahead and close out this vlog but I will definitely be back soon with another update. All right, y'all, so I'm here for the very final update for this Try a Chapter vlog. I ended up reading the prologue in here for A Merry Little Meet Cute. It was about 10 pages, so it matched perfectly about what I read in every other one of the books. I don't believe that the prologue actually follows the main characters of the story, but it does give you a good setup. So in the prologue, you're following the perspective of Teddy Ray Fletcher. He is primarily making money as a producer of like cheap porn movies and he is trying to branch out into something a little bit more lucrative and so he has an idea for a Christmas film and it has basically been pitched to a channel called the Hope Channel which you know is basically a ripoff of the Hallmark Channel and at the start of this book production of the movie is supposed to start the next day when he gets a call that a bunch of his like costume designers and everything like that got injured in this very bizarre accident and not only that but his lead actress is sick and can no longer be a part of the movie and so he's talking all of this over with the director director and they are kind of going over headshots of lead actresses that they could get to replace the one who is sick and he accidentally includes a shot of one of the main porn actresses that he uses in his porn videos. And the director sees this and she's instantly intrigued by this person and she wants this person as the lead in the movie. This is not a wholesome Christmas movie actress but he has to keep this director happy and so at the very end of this prologue you find that he is going to be calling this actress. And so I believe you're going to be following the perspective of the actress B and possibly the love interest, which is going to be the man that she's filming the movie with, the co-lead star of the movie. This prologue was a lot of fun. I was chuckling out loud at some of the things that were said. It was a really, really good time. And of course, I definitely think that this is going to be a very smutty Christmas story, given the authors and the fact that it does follow a porn star. So I definitely think this is going to be on the more adult side of Christmas stories. Ooh, had to switch hands, y'all. Nobody ever tells you how rough vlogging is on your arms. So I'm trying to think of on my ratings one through five what they would be. Christmas Murder Game is definitely number five. I really have no interest in that story at this time. In fact I've pretty much forgotten everything that I read. It didn't connect me, it didn't hook me, and so that's easily at the very bottom. I loved Christmas by the book and the vibes and the writing style. To be honest I think that so far that was probably the most engaging in terms of atmosphere and writing style. So I very much loved it. But these past three have just been so much fun. Those three are definitely at the top. If I had to choose one, I would probably say Once Upon a December still has my intrigue the highest and I want to continue. In the Holidays is probably second and then A Merry Little Meet Cute is possibly third. We'll see if any of the books that I'm reading in the following vlogs knock them out of the top spots but for right now those are going to be my rankings. At the end of the series depending on how much time left I have in the month and depending on where I am in my December TR I plan on fully reading some of these books that end up at the top of my list. But anyway y'all that is it for this vlog. Please comment down below and let me know if you have read any of these and what your thoughts are and please let me know if you agree with any of my rankings or if you really do think I should prioritize one over the others. Please also let me know if you are reading any holiday related books this year. I'm always going to be on the lookout for more just because I like to fill my December with these types of stories. So as always, if you like this video or if you just like me, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already, because I would sure love to see you in my next video. Bye guys. It's cold outside, but the fire keeps us warm. We can spend the night underneath the mistletoe. And I've gotten you a present that I put on